everyone, it's Katrina. From a strange burial with a bird to a labyrinth from legend come to life, here are 10 mysterious archaeological discoveries. Number 10. Bolshoi Zayatsky Labyrinths Bolshoi Zayatsky Island is part of Russia's isolated Solovetsky archipelago. Less than 1,000 people live throughout the remote group of six islands, which are situated in the northern part of the country, just 103 miles south of the Arctic Circle. It is home to dozens of ancient, mysterious labyrinths of unknown origin, dating back to the Neolithic period. The ancient structures are extremely well preserved and are estimated to be around 30,000 years old. Made up of stone heat and earthen mounds, archaeologists believe that the labyrinths were used for mystical purposes and symbolized a barrier between our world and the next. There are several instances where two spirals come together like two serpents looking at each other. The structures may have also been used as a calendar, following the orbits of both the sun and the moon, or maybe as an altar in rituals, or as a way to trap spirits. Perhaps they had many uses and meanings, but others have said the labyrinths were much more straightforward. They were used as fish traps. Water levels were much higher thousands of years ago, and the fish may have swum through the entrance and gotten trapped, making it easier for fishermen to get them out. But they seem very complex to be used for just fish traps, don't you think? The inconvenient truth is that we may never know what was going on in the minds of the early people who built the Bolshoi Zayatsky labyrinths. What do you think the labyrinths were for? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 9. The Astronaut of Kassar A steel or upright stone slab on display at the Cáceres Museum in Spain has been dubbed the Astronaut of Kassar. It shows a humanoid figure with bizarrely bulbous shoulders and a misshapen head, leading many to question its origins and inspiration. The artifact, which originally stood in a nearby cemetery, also bears an inscription containing Latin letters, which researchers have failed to decipher. Legend holds that villagers made the sign of the cross when they walked past the stone, and children threw rocks at it because it was creepy. The pagan figure was a bad omen for the local Catholics. Conspiracy theorists were quick to suggest that the steel's carvings depict an ancient extraterrestrial, hence the nickname Astronaut of Kassar. But archaeologists were not satisfied with that explanation. Not good enough. Looking at it within the context of the languages and cultures from ancient Iberia, the Latin lettering suggests that the steel dates back to during the Roman occupation of Iberia or right before. While we can recognize the letters, the inscription itself, and what language it is remains a mystery. The humanoid figure most likely represents a Celt-Iberian warrior from the 2nd or 1st century BC. The Celt-Iberians, of course, had their own languages and were described as Celtic by authors of the time, but who they were and a clear definition of these people is still up for debate. The simple reality is that researchers do not know what language the steel's inscription is in or what it says, and they are also unsure of the explanation behind its astronaut-like image. Number 8. Unusual Child Burial Half a century ago, archaeologists discovered a child's remains in Tunnel Velki Cave in Poland's Saspowska Valley. Without taking note of some extraordinary aspects of the burial, they placed the bones into storage where they were forgotten about for decades but there was something pretty strange about them. A team led by Malgorsata Kot, an archaeologist at the University of Warsaw Institute of Archaeology, set out to untangle the mystery behind the young person's remains that sat in a box collecting dust for so long. Their whole project is trying to go through boxes that were left behind after excavations. They believe that the bones, which were radiocarbon dated to the second half of the 18th century or the early 19th century, represent the only modern human skeleton ever found in a cave in this part of the country. The other human remains found nearby date back to at least 4,500 years ago. The 10-year-old was apparently undernourished when he or she died. Their gender and other key information remains unknown, pending the results of a DNA test. However, the weirdest thing was the discovery of a chaffinch bird skull in the child's mouth and another next to the child. This observation only adds to the already confusing nature of the lone burial. This practice is not known among the ethnologists we have asked for opinions, said Cod. It remains a mystery why the child was buried in a cave in this way, not in a cemetery in a nearby village. The child's skull was not in storage and was sent to other anthropologists 50 years ago, and now the skull is missing, which presents a major obstacle when it comes to learning more about the bizarre burial. Researchers were able to look at previous reports and photographs from 50 years ago and the bones they found in storage. The lone burial, along with the bird skulls, is a very strange case. 
and so far there are no answers to the questions. The caves were used for burials for many years, from the Paleolithic to the Middle Ages, so this find was very rare. Human activity has heavily interfered with the area where the child was found, including companies digging out the mud from the caves to make fertilizer. It is impossible to know how many artifacts and bones from the past have been lost. And now for number seven. But first, I want to say a big thank you to Tuan Onstank and Beverly Smith for supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the Origins Explained family. Number seven, Connecticut's earliest people. In early 2019, workers discovered evidence of Southern New England's first human inhabitants while doing bridge construction above the Farmington River. The find came as no surprise to archaeologists, who had long suspected the presence of historic sites in the area, but it is fascinating nonetheless. The 12,500-year-old site dates back to the Paleo-Indian period and is the oldest among several more recent findings in the area. It was found after the Department of Transportation facilitated a deeper-than-usual dig, consequently turning up earlier artifacts. Altogether, the dig identified 15,000 artifacts and 27 features, including tools, holes, walls, an open fire pit, and temporary housing posts. Archaeologists know relatively little about the first people who inhabited Connecticut and the greater region, making the discovery a significant one. Before this, only a handful of Paleo-Indian artifacts had ever been discovered in this part of the country. The valuable items may have gone undetected if not for the Department of Transportation's $14.7 million bridge project, which covered the excavation costs. State law requires agencies to conduct standard excavations in anticipation of building projects in case any historic sites are present, and archaeological research on its own lacks the funding for such a big undertaking. This and the few other Paleo-Indian discoveries throughout New England marked the beginning of researchers' ability to learn about the customs and culture of the ancient people who once inhabited the region. Number 6. Casta Tomb The location of Alexander the Great's tomb is a long-standing mystery, but a team of archaeologists may have come one step closer to finding answers at the Casta Hill archaeological site, roughly 370 miles north of Athens, Greece. Starting in 2012, the team, led by Katerina Peristeri, excavated what's believed to be the country's largest burial site, dating back to sometime between 325 and 300 BC. In August 2014, the researchers announced the discovery of a tomb dating back to the time of Alexander the Great. The site consisted of a burial mound surrounded by a 10-foot-high circular marble wall measuring 1,600 feet in circumference. Two headless sphinxes guarded the cemetery's entrance, which was once accessed via a 15-foot-wide road. The tomb complex, adorned with frescoes and marble decorations, was partially destroyed during the Roman occupation of Greece, but it was left untouched for 2,000 years thereafter, affording modern experts the rare opportunity to take an unspoiled look at the region's past. While it it's clear that the tomb belonged to someone extremely important, it's unknown who that person was. It is not that of Alexander, who was likely buried in Egypt after passing away in the year 323, in what is now Iraq. One theory suggests, however, that it was originally intended for Alexander's body. But it's even more likely that the burial was constructed for someone in Alexander's inner circle, perhaps a relative or a top-ranking commander. The presence of two female sculptures at a marble doorway indicate that the tomb was built for a female, maybe Alexander's wife and son, who were murdered shortly after his death, or his mother. For now, the debate continues, but one thing is clear. Experts are closer than they were to disentangling the tumultuous life and death of Alexander and his loved ones. Number 5. The Riace Bronzes the Bronzi di Riace, or Riace Bronzes, also called the Riace Warriors, are a pair of full-sized Greek statues depicting naked, bearded warriors. They represent two of just a handful of surviving full-size ancient Greek bronzes, as most were melted down and reused, thereby being lost to history. The statues, which date back to sometime between 460 and 450 BC, appear to depict a younger individual, statue A, and an older man, statue B, but their identity are unknown. In 1972, a Roman chemist named Stefano Mariottini discovered the Riace bronzes while fishing in the Ionian Sea. At first, he thought he had encountered a corpse, but thankfully, he soon realized that the object in question was one of the statues. Mariottini contacted local authorities, who reportedly handled the artifacts kind of haphazardly. The statues were kept hidden from view for roughly a decade thereafter while they were cleaned, 
restored and studied. They were finally revealed to the public in 1981, attracting over a million visitors. How the Greek-made statues reached Italy is unknown. Theories abound, with the prevailing narrative suggesting that the Riace bronzes were carried into the Ionian Sea on a ship that sank in a storm, or that they were thrown overboard at some point. But at least for now, the circumstances surrounding the statue's origin and how they ended up on the seabed remain largely a mystery. Number 4. Europe's Earliest Humans The history of early modern human migration out of Africa is nothing short of confusing, as archaeological discoveries continuously challenge previously held notions of when and where our ancestors first traveled. A recently published study reveals the discovery of an ancient site in Western Europe, near the Portuguese coast, indicating that humans arrived in the region around 5,000 years earlier than experts originally thought. Inside the Lapa do Picareiro cave, archaeologists uncovered a treasure trove of ancient tools, including flints, small blades, and deer teeth, which were likely used as jewelry. An analysis of the artifacts, carried out by experts from the University of Louisville, reveals that people likely came to westernmost Europe for the first time between 41,000 and 38,000 years ago. The discovery indicates that humans spread rapidly across Eurasia over a few thousand year span, and that their presence may have adversely affected Neanderthals, who went extinct around that time. The the question of whether the last surviving Neanderthals in Europe have been replaced or assimilated by incoming modern humans is a long-standing unsolved issue in paleoanthropology, explains study co-leader and anthropologist Lucas Friedel, adding that it's unlikely humans arrived in the region after Neanderthals disappeared from the landscape. The discovery adds to others in recent years that point toward our ancestors traveling to Europe earlier than we thought, an idea that becomes less controversial as more evidence in support of it comes to light. Number 3. Barbigal Mills Located near the town of Arles in southern France, Barbigal Mills has a reputation for being the greatest known concentration of mechanical power in the ancient world. Widely regarded as one of the world's first industrial complexes, the 2nd century Roman watermill produced enough flour for as much as one quarter of Arles' population during its operation. It's clear that hydraulic engineering played a role in running the plant, but little is known about the exact technology that was used. Fed by Roman aqueducts, the mills consisted of 16 water wheels, arranged in consecutive pairs, descending a steep hillside. No traces of the wooden machinery survive today, and the upper part of the mill complex was destroyed at some point throughout history, leaving experts with unanswered questions about the establishment's inner workings. A new study found that an elbow-shaped flume played a role in the mill's operation. No other Greco-Roman shoots of this shape have ever been discovered, leaving researchers to wonder exactly what the part's purpose was and why its shape is so peculiar. They ultimately concluded that the L-shaped flume was uniquely adapted to Barbigal Mills and was shaped to increase water flow in a certain part of the mill, making it more efficient than the standard part. The study also found the first known evidence of a water-powered saw, which was used for cutting wood at the site. While scientists have found a logical explanation behind the machinery at Barbigal Mills, the sheer ingenuity of Roman engineers remains a subject of fascination. In fact, the knowledge that the designers and builders of sites like this possessed may even come in handy in modern times, especially when it comes to identifying springs that can be regenerated or reused, how to mitigate their depletion, and how to preserve water sources in dry regions. Number 2. Neanderthal Parenthood There's a lot we don't know about our prehistoric cousins, the Neanderthals, but discoveries in recent years show that we often mistakenly think of these ancient relatives as being stupid, or at least primitive, compared to early humans. The most recent evidence against this misconception is captured in a new study analyzing three Neanderthal milk teeth found in northeastern Italy, belonging to children who lived between 70,000 and 45,000 years ago. Scientists found that Neanderthal babies were weaned off milk and transitioned to solid food at around five or six months old, much like human children. The beginning of weaning relates to physiology rather than to cultural factors, explains study co-author Alessia Nava. In modern humans, the first introduction of solid food occurs at around six months of age, when the child needs a more energetic food supply and it is shared by very different cultures and societies. The finding indicates that Neanderthals were likely intellectually on par with our homo 
sapiens ancestors. In the words of researcher Frederico Lugli, now we know that also Neanderthals started to wean their children when modern humans do. In particular, compared to other primates, it is highly conceivable that the high energy demand of the growing human brain triggers the early introduction of solid foods in a child's diet. Let us also not forget that Neanderthals and humans share 99.7% of the same DNA, making us more closely related than we perhaps thought. In fact, most modern humans carry a small percentage of our extinct relatives' DNA, making us living proof that Neanderthals and humans interbred, and that we weren't so different from one another after all. But if we are so alike, and both so advanced compared to other primates, why did humans survive into the present day while Neanderthals went extinct around 40,000 years ago? That's a mystery that the experts themselves are still trying to get to the bottom of, and discoveries like this, which point toward Neanderthals' capabilities, are arguably present more questions than answers. Number 1. Labyrinth of Legend Of all the labyrinths in the world, the most famous has to be the one from the legend of the Minotaur, the bull monster who was confined to the labyrinth on the island of Crete. The horrific beast would eat young men and women, and was finally killed by the hero Theseus but did this labyrinth actually exist? There is evidence to suggest that a labyrinth did indeed exist on Crete. In fact, there are three sites that lay claim to being the true location of the legendary labyrinth. These three places have evidence of a network of tunnels. One is at the Minoan palaces in the city of Knossos. The second is in a town 20 miles away called Gorton. And the third potential site is not on Crete at all, but on the Greek mainland. Everyone believed Knossos was the home of the legendary King Minos, but the site uncovered at Gorton has a network of interlocking tunnels and dead ends. There's debate between scholars whether any of these are the labyrinth mentioned in the myth, or whether they are a series of tunnels built for other purposes. Do you think the labyrinth was real? Let me know in the comments below! Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time! Bye!